Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Get Your Paint On Here. This is Thursday, October 24th. We are one week away from our Halloween stream, which I am super excited about. Tony, have we talked about that yet? Uh, I think we talked a little bit. We definitely have a surprise. We have a surprise. For next week. Tomorrow, or next week, will not be your usual fare. Wait, is it a surprise? I thought there was a tweet that went out about it. That's why I asked th- if that's we talked why, about it. That's why I'm asking. I'm not exactly sure what was said and there what was wasn't. A, there was a tweet that talked about stencils being used. Yeah, mm. we're using stencils. They're stencils. And They're, I think stencils that exist if, you, if you take a peek, Jordan, lean to your right a little bit. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a little something there in the background. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Does anybody I, see what that is? I think, oh, oh. I think the tweet gave it away. Oh, okay, oh, well. Oh, 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 that, that, that. Maybe we're being coy for no reason, but anyway. Yeah, maybe. Anyways, not yep. your regularly scheduled programming. Good to see y'all. Thanks all for showing up. Uh, a couple of things announcement-wise before we get on to the stream. Uh, we've got stream schedule. Uh, everything's pretty much the same as normal. Staff showdown November 19th and hobby hangout tomorrow, the 25th. Uh, with Brian or t- Danny? Which Danny, Danny. Danny tomorrow. Out? Yeah, he's going to be painting up some, uh, some walls. Walls. Yeah. Nice. I remember talking to him about that. All right. Cool. Move on to subscriptions. Uh, Donut Factory at 100 subs. I think we're at around 75. Yeah, 75, right high 70s, something so like that. So we're about 25 away from getting the new Donut Factory um, <coughs> thingy mabobber. Yeah, keep those subs coming. <laughs> use, your, use your Amazon Prime subs to get in there. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll take it all. Uh, mini crates. We've got a new one for you. We've got the non metallic Newman. Yeah, I believe that's oh, yeah. the uh, that's just Aurora. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Aurora, Aurora one without all of her armor and robot wings and whatnot. Which actually looks really cool. I like this model a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, November 19th, everybody. You have until then. Um, all right, let's get on to today's model. Short and sweet and to the point, we have Lord Roger DeVirus. Lord Roger. Um, so. This is a new Infernal, well, new Infernal model. Uh, and I'm super excited to paint this guy. Um, this is going to be my personal one for a journeyman league that we're setting up here uh, within within the local company. We're doing journeyman oblivion campaign. Yeah, journeyman so oblivion combine, campaign. So we're a little bit of both. Yeah. We're, we're, you know. we're going to combine army building slowly with also Co- playing correct. the oblivion campaign because the first few games of the oblivion campaign are smaller, like no Warcaster games. Right. What are the what are the points in the first part? I could look in this it's book like, right okay. here in front of me. It's like 25, 25 points. 30. But I believe it's, But yeah. it's, it's no Warcaster 25, yeah. 30. Yeah. Um, which is how it's different than your, your typical yeah. journeyman, which is what we're doing. We're basically just doing the oblivion campaign over like a longer period of time right. so people can build up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm super excited about that. And I'm taking my Infernal's Army, which a lot of people may know that I started for Lock and Load. Didn't really get a chance to pay, play it at Lock and Load because it's busy. Um, but uh, this is just going to be more of a continuation on it. Um, so if, if anybody was here for the streams pre-Lock and Load, um, I started that army. They've got red armor with teal glow. This is a picture of my Valon Hawk that I was working on on stream. Um, so we're going to kind of carry that through into this guy. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to incorporate the red yet, but we're, we're going we're gonna to figure it out together. <clears throat> All right. All right, thanks to Dixie35. What, what's your plan here, Tony? Uh, so really, uh, as you can see, I already got started. So when we... I was looking at this miniature, and obviously the big features on him are those big magical infernal glows. Uh, and so I wanted to do nice glows on there, and then I wanted to get uh, so I wanted to get some advice from you on how to do nice glow. Yeah. But then also I thought it'd be really cool. I haven't done it a whole lot to do the some OSL. OSL. Yeah. On on um, the sides of his face where those glows are coming in. So yeah. So I, I'm definitely gonna gonna do a lot of like OSL on like the top of his head here, kind of going down the side of his face into his beard. Yeah. And, like, this area is, is going to be glowing quite a bit. So we're going to – I'm going to do a lot of that when, when we go through it. We'll okay. talk about that. Uh, we got a question um, if this guy's related to the other Viros, the elf. No, he's not. No. Also, Tony spelled his name wrong in the stream. Did I? Yeah, he's got an oh, A. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Devioros. Uh, oh, I'm Devioros. sorry. Devioros. Yeah, it's V-Y-R-O-S. Thank A-O-S. you to Quasitor A-O-S. for correcting me. So it's not exactly which you should never do. The elf's name, but yes. thank you anyway. Oh also, yeah, Dixie thirty uh, five. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub, getting us closer to the the donut yeah. shop. Absolutely. And Travis uh, pointing out our our target lock. I have a target lock right here. Uh, we've had some problems before. Just trying to keep them on, so that's the edge of where yeah. my base is going to go. So the mini is always going to be. But it's invisible. 
spot. In the right. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, the Jordan right has spot, some tape so. from framing tape. I have some framing tape. Blocking out where the, what the camera yeah, can see. What you can't see is right behind this paintbrush nib is a line of paint. If it's off There's camera, it of doesn't of exist. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it don't exist. Everyone, nothing everyone there. That. Okay. All right. So, yeah, let's get started. Tony, yeah. you wanted to, to go into the glow. Let's, uh, let's work on that. Yeah. One, one thing is I also, I, before the stream, I was furiously putting my painting he skills from so last worried. week's to, to work trying to get this done because I wanted – Jordan paints faster than I do, so I wanted to make sure I had something for that glow to land on. No. Yeah. All right. So you want to tell everybody where we're at with this right now? Yeah. So Tony had approximately two minutes to, to base coat his, <laughs> his teal. So I'm going to let you build that up a little bit more if you feel like you need it. Okay. Um, one of the nice things about doing glow is having the xenothyl highlight or like base coat underneath is really, really helpful for that. Um, helps get a really solid, smooth um, base coat of this teal like you can see on, the, on my model here. This is basically like one one coat of teal with a little bit of touch-ups here and there, which I'm kind of doing right now, just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Um, and then we're going we're gonna to go over it here in a second. And I'm probably going to pick, uh, let's do a little bit of Menoth White Highlight, which we're going to mix into the Arcane Blue, which is what the base coat is for this. I'm going to be lazy for this Oblivion League and play my Rulic Force. That's fine. Because I haven't gotten any real games of War Machine with either of the two new dwarves, Bamfist or Harlow. I've been playing Riot Quest with them, of course, and I play tested with them, but I haven't played an actual yeah. game with them in my army. I mean, my whole idea for this thing was just to get people to play. Yeah, like, and it might, I mean, it might end up having me paint something that I haven't painted for that army, yeah. but I've got a lot of models already painted for that army, so I might not paint anything new. But yeah. I might. All right. I, feel I mean, it's, we got a lot of new people, too, so it'll be yeah. nice to, to kind of get some, some newer, newer folks involved in mm -hmm. kind of what, what the hobby's all yeah, about. Yeah, Tanner was saying on Facebook he's going he's gonna to beat up your Infernal Army. Yeah, I saw that. I decided not to comment on it because, you know, <laughs> I don't want to make him sad. <laughs> and so what did you say you were putting anything in your teal? Yeah, so this is uh, so the, the Arcane Blue uh, I mixed with a little bit of Manoth White Highlight. Okay. Um, and this is just a pretty subtle first highlight. Um, and I'm just hitting these raised edges, kind of defining the shape of this swirly ghost monster thing. It's probably a soul of some sort. Yeah. Probably. Yup. He keeps his souls in a book. He does keep Easier souls to catalog where they're at that way. <laughs> <laughs> so he knows what to order for Christmas? Mm-hmm. I'm going to start on this Travis night. is asking if we're bringing models, what models we're bringing to Warfare Weekend. Um, I'm probably going to bring Monpok primarily. Have to wait to find out. And then I'm going to try and squeeze in Riot Quest. I'm going to try to also get uh, the Butcher and Crawtooth and the Wolf, or at least the Butcher and Crawtooth painted before Warfare Weekend, so I can bring them. So I think a buddy of mine's borrowing my Infernal's Army for, for that yeah. show, so it will be there. Um, I need to figure out if I can get it back from him to finish painting it a little bit more because um, it's not completely done. But we will see. Uh, he also might have his by then. He's, he's waiting on it all to get shipped to him. So um, I should have my Infernal's Army there. As far as like what the studio is going to have there to show off, I cannot comment on that yet. Yeah. Unfortunately. Because we, we are also finalizing pre-releases and stuff, too. We, yeah. we can't officially talk about what's going to be there and what's not going to be there. Because yep. to a certain extent, we don't know. Correct. Uh, so, Tony, you're going in with that highlight. It's looking pretty good from here. Uh, I'm just taking it up a notch, going with a little bit brighter color, mixing in a little bit more of that Menoth White highlight into these highlights. Okay. And okay, we're just going to hit a little bit more of those raised, raised edges. Get in the lines. Tanner says he doesn't get sad. He wins games, except Ooh. when he doesn't oh, win games. Oh, sassy Tanner's confidence pants. is wonderful. I love it. But confidence isn't everything. You got to put your money where your mouth is, man. Got to put your money where your mouth is. Or more specifically, your models where your mouth is. Models where your mouth don't is. Your that's don't put. That's no. Put your don't where your mouth is. Don't do it. We have specifically at the end of the show. 
uh, legally saying don't do those oh, things. Yeah, don't, don't listen to eat Jordan. models. I don't say yeah. eat your models. So put your models where <laughs> put your, your mouth, m- Yeah, exactly. It's an expression, guys. It's not a literal statement. Don't, I'm not telling you to do that. <laughs> don't do that. Some people take everything literally. That, I mean, I take most things pretty literally. I, I'm, I'm that person. If anybody knows me fairly well, they will understand that pretty pretty easily. Jordan, will you be? Are you planting? Are you planting? Planting? <laughs> Am I planting? Are you I'm not, not planting? planting. Anyway. Are you planning to take anything to paint at Warfare Weekend? I would love to. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, I think I'm bringing my Totem Hunters. I'm not sure yet. It depends on whether or not I can get a good. Good the the one you painted already? Yeah. You, are you going to work on it some more, or are you just going to bring uh, it? I might just bring, bring it. it. I was going to show, gonna show a, fr- a friend of mine wanted to take a look at yeah. it. So bring it it's, it's pretty sweet. If you haven't seen it yet, it is. we we did show it for P3 Painters previously. It was very impressive. It's one of my favorite models of yours. And that was what you were working on at Gen Con, right? Yeah, I was working on it yeah. at Gen Con. Uh, I finished it up and submitted it at a... Um, wow, I can't remember the name of that show. That's awful. Nova. Uh, Nova Open. Thank yeah. you. Uh, my brain ain't working right now. Uh, yeah, I submitted at Nova Open and painting competition just to see how how things went, get a little bit of critiques, which uh, was great. It was really nice to to hang out and see a lot of the other really beautifully painted models, like uh, my buddy's Totem Huntress, Eric Sonja with Swinson. That guy's Totem Huntress is gorgeous. <coughs> Uh, all right, so we're we're getting there on this teal. We've got a little bit more definition. I hope you guys can see that. It looks like the the light's kind of blowing out some of this color here. But I'm gonna step up to the next highlight. Yeah, level. me too. I'm just gonna hit kind of the the inside, very big points in there. Hopefully, you can see that this bright white. In there. Go. So I like to think of glow as kind of like the inverse of fire, right? So fire, you want the inside to be glowy um, and the outside to be darker, whereas like soul glow and things like that, you want the opposite. You want the outside to be glowing and the inside to be a little bit darker. But as a whole, you want the whole thing to be brighter. Dork Jedi says, let your soul glow. Let your soul glow. In huh. quotation marks, like it's, you know, from a song or something. Yeah. I don't know what song that's from, but I can of imagine. Course you, of course you don't. Of course, of course I don't. I'm, I'm like 12 <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> Tony would be surprised and horrified if I knew what that was from. I, you know, I, th- that's the thing is like... it. At this point, it's not surprising the uh, the movie references and stuff that you don't know. Hey, I'm it's getting better when, at movie when you know them, I'm like, whoa! I totally thought that was going to be Vandabee's, over your head. Vandeby says they just showed up and wants to know what, what paint you're using right now. Uh, I am using uh, a combination of Arcane Blue and progressive amounts of Menoth White Highlight to get yeah. this this gradient. And I probably, oh, so I guess this isn't too bad. I think I've just been putting it on kind of thin. Ed Burrell in the Facebook chat chiming in saying that that was from Coming to America. Hi, Ed. Hello, Hello Ed. Thanks for, for chiming in and but that movie imparting was made some knowledge. Like 20 years before you were born or something? Something like that. I don't even know. You're like eight years old. I am like eight or something. Just the beard throws people off. <laughs> the beard does throw people off. One of these days... I will shave my beard off, uh-huh. and I'll clean shaven the whole the whole face. Yeah, yeah, and it's gonna look weird. Knowing what my face looks like without a beard, <laughs> no one else does. It's a shock. Yeah, it definitely takes about ten years off. All right, so we're, we're coming pretty Hungerford close. Hungerford has asked to be allowed to shave your beard off. I, he keeps on asking, and I'm a little <laughs> concerned about 
potentially letting him do this. He really wants to do it. And I'm tempted to let him. But I'm also horrified to let him. <laughs> oh, I definitely have a baby face. How, um, so how high do we want to take the highlights on this glow? Like, I'm are we taking, I'm it, taking all it all the way, the way to, to bare, all the, oh, all the way to white? Yeah, I'm taking it all the way to mouth white, okay. or all the way to Mara white. <clears throat> so we're most of the way there. But the, the way that you really get that pop is by having that really strong contrast between the white and the like deeper recesses, right? Which we might go back and adjust here in a little bit with a little bit of uh, like blue ink or something. Like just add into the yeah, just to add to like the underside and inside crevices, just to add more contrast. I gotta say, like <sighs> this is this is nice. I'm already starting to kind of hit that semi meditative, just painting. Yep, little magical smoke swirls. It's all pretty easy. It's not, yeah, this it's is a really easy not, technique not a stressful. The chat's devolving you know. into uh, lots of hunger for faces. It's weird. I'm not going <laughs> to tell surprised? you guys what's happening. I mean, I can see it. But yeah. here's the thing. It's Hungerford and Jeff who are posting the, the I know. Hungerford faces. I know. It's going back and forth. It's, it's all in-house right now. I think, oh no, I guess this is glow. Okay. Coming out of the book down here at the bottom. All right, time to go with the um, Mara White, which I should have here somewhere, or not. Yeah, I don't see it on the table. Uh, I don't know, I've got one over here. You got one? Yeah. There's my head. All right. Tony's luxurious bangs. Creeping into the shot. Luxurious bangs. That sounds like a Tony thing. <laughs> Tonyism. Oh, way off screen. All right. So, yeah, hopefully this is uh, it's helping to get all this stuff on screen for you guys, uh, having these bits and bobs it, of tape. They seem to yeah. be helping me, at least, like yeah, reminding they're, me they're that they're I'm, I'm me. in the zone. All right, I'm going to step up one more. I'm going to put a lot more in this time. We're going to make a big bump. In fact, I'm going to go like this. There. Okay, that wasn't quite the big dramatic bump I was going for. You're going for high drama? High drama color. There we go. There's also a little bit of comments here and there in the chat about our dev stream yesterday and some of the things we talked about. That no, nothing happened. That we'll be talking you didn't more miss anything about next week. At all. Also, um, to remind everybody, Warfare Weekend's coming up, so our streaming schedule is getting interrupted a little bit. Yep. Only, Tony only says, mildly. Tony says it's only going to be one week. Only mildly. We, so uh, we will have our October 31st. Apparently that's a holiday of some sort. Uh, I've heard that. special episode and then we will not have a regular stream schedule the following week but we will be streaming War uh, warfare weekend mm -hmm. starting friday so friday yeah. through sunday we will have daily streams from warfare weekend and then uh we will be picking up with uh dev hangout the follow that following week so we end on sunday yeah. and we will have a dev hangout on that wednesday yeah which is why we're doing a, uh, a bit of a reveal about brand new model rules next week, even though the CID doesn't start until Monday, the uh, the fourth of November. Is that, is that Monday? Yes, yes. Yeah, because we are all flying to St. Louis on the sixth, which is a Wednesday, which would be when we normally do those kind of shows. All right. Sounds yeah, we could try and do a dev fun. hangout live from the airplane, but I don't. That sounds know like fun. How that's we could do one from the airport, out. depending on time and stuff. It might be really early for us. I don't know when our flight leaves. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, so my glow is done. Okay, I want to look at your glow. I want to see what level you're at. Do you want the model or do you want the, the camera? The oh, camera. Let me look at the model. Okay. 
Here, let's trade. Oz, please help us. So the knife, <laughs> the knife is starting to get the uh, the higher end of the high. Oh yeah, I got a little ways to go. All right. So I, yeah, you're two, you're, mo two more passes. You're doing good. You're, you're a couple couple steps below where yeah. I'm at as far as brightness is concerned. Yep. I'm on the right track, though. You are certainly on the right track. Okay. Oh, your skin's looking good, Tony. His face is looking nice. You use that uh, that previous technique again? Yeah, man. Get it practice. I got to get that recipe locked into my head and have the way to go. I also, uh, uh, Jordan had been painting another miniature that had colors of the face on it. So these like facial zones of yellow, red. Blue, oh, yeah, yeah. which is something you can probably talk about in a future episode because it's a little in depth. But uh, I put a little of that to work too. Put a little yellow on the top of his head. Mm -hmm. Pop it out. I mean, we, I can talk about color zones while I'm painting random other things, um, just because it's a Ab yeah. It's I think it's an important thing really to talk cool. about. Um, so color zones in the face are basically um, it, it is literally what it's talking about. It's it's different parts of the face that ha are under like have different tints of color uh, based on like how much like volume of blood is circulating through that area, et cetera. Like, so for instance, the, the top of your head is a little bit more yellow because it's, you know, sun and light is centralized, you know, on the top of your head. Uh, your like eye zone and like the top of your cheekbones uh, are red, and then from the the like bottom of your nose and kind of the underneath your cheekbones down is blue. So if you incorporate those colors into the the zones of the face, you'll get this really natural, lifelike representation of what something looks like or someone's face looks like. So try it out next time you guys are are painting stuff. Yeah, it's just and it, it's just like subtle, like little subtle glazes will, are really all you need to get in there. It just and adds that nice, that. nice color uh, variety into the face. Yep. Takes it from the way I usually do it, which is just kind of you know, peach on peach on peach. Mm -hmm. That's more work than I usually do on faces, Tony. <laughs> well, you just put paint on things. No. Yes. I put I put more than just paint. I put washes on them, too. Correct. Mm -hmm. That is the thing you do. Yeah. All right. So I'm adding a little bit of our, like, highlight color to this jackbone that I'm using on these pages here um, to put a little bit of glow. I, I don't know. Can you guys see that on stream? I don't know if this is, like, the camera is not quite yeah, we've catching we've got our us. windows real small, so let's... Bump it up and see. Can you uh, see that? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. A little bit there. I feel like this is a little a little bright. Is there a way to tone this down, Tony, at all? To the, the, the camera? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the easier thing is just going to be to pop your light a little higher and try that first. See that. Doesn't go much higher. No, it's not getting, no. Not getting much better. Didn't that help? No. No. We're going to have to adjust it next time. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can talk we can talk a little bit more about it if you have more questions about it later. But um that's that's the general gist of like color zones. And and the whole body has color zones too. It's not just the face. Um but the face is like generally a good focus point for a lot of that. I think that's definitely something we should do in a future episode. Yeah. Maybe if we ever do like a, a bust stream, oh, we'll, sure. we'll do that as a focus point. Um, but we'll really have to dial in the cameras for that because it is a real subtle thing. So I'm just finishing up. I got one more layer to do after this, which is going to be adding in that, that Menoth White highlight. All right, so let me get in and do some of the skin tone here. Get some of this Midland flesh. Yeah, the only thing you've been working on is your is your smoke ghost, right? Uh, I just painted the pages. Yeah. Put some base coats on the pages. But now I'm going to 
start painting some of that other stuff. So here's a question. I'm going to have to, like, I'm not going to be able to get all this done on the stream today, obviously, but I want to paint this glow. Uh, is it going to be a problem that I haven't painted those areas first? No. So I haven't painted his coat or his book no, or anything totally, like that, things totally that will be fine. affected by it? I mean, so it, it's something that I like to try and do while I'm painting the rest of the model. Some people find it easier to do after everything else is painted and then putting the glow in afterwards. Um, the, the really important thing to note is that you don't want to glaze the bright colors, because you can't glaze a highlight. Right. You have to, you have to paint a highlight on. OK. So when you're painting the, the like bright reflective or the like OSL on, you have to paint it on. You can't glaze it on. Got, OK, I understand what you're saying. <clears throat> okay. Uh, can I grab that white back from you? Yeah. I don't know if I have one. It's super handy. Has Hungerford painted on this stream before? Nope. nope. I didn't think so. We, Racked, we might have to get him on here. Racked and confused. We did, uh, yes. With an appropriate name, says, when am, when am I going to paint? Because Tony and Hungerford have. Hungerford has not yet. Uh, and, uh, chat can also throw in their um, requests for who they would like to sit in the guest chair. Yeah. Who would you like to see on camera? Painting with Jordan. Who would you like to see ignoring all of Jordan's advice and just slapping paint on models? So that's me. <laughs> I mean, there's there's some like stuff that we can talk about. Yeah, I don't know if do. there is. Well, like I mean, like with I was that saying, attitude, like I was saying, not. you have to you have to want to learn yeah. to learn Jordan. Yeah. Like I was saying right before the show started, my if I was ever on the show, my goal would be to get a model completely done to my level of painting. As quick as possible. But you know what? There's there's something to be said for like people seeing that, right? Yeah. Like, it's a different style of painting, which I don't personally partake in. But not that. Well, it's, it's any not. Verse. It's not artistic at all. It it's, is. Yeah, it is, is utilitarian. Fine. It is. This model is not painted yet. Oh, and now it is. Mm -hmm. I am done. I can move on. Still better than an unpainted model. Yes, painted models make better games. Games look cooler when everything is painted. All right, I am going in for my, my final. Travis says that's how he paints too, but I know that Travis is trying to improve, so he's doing something I'm not doing. Yes, that's true. Now I want to see Oz paint on stream. I agree. <laughs> I want to see Oz paint on stream okay. too. Sure. <laughs> sure. Gosh darn it. Oz. Maybe I'll paint one of these days. Maybe maybe you just paint and maybe just one, just do one thing differently that you wouldn't do. Just a simple change or addition or an extra mm. step, just something you wouldn't worth it. normally Oz do. Oz just says no. That sounds like a thing that Oz would just say. Right like now. every once in a while when I'm painting something, <laughs> I look at it and I'm like, that spot doesn't look exactly right. And I think about trying to do a highlight or something. And then I decide not to, generally. I also think you just gave us a new idea for another show. Yeah? Yeah. Oz says no. Sure. Oz says yeah. no. Yeah. It's just a talk show. Oz is on it every time. You come up with good ideas. And then Oz just shuts him down. He's like, mm, nah. Uh, did you ever watch Hysteria, one of my favorite cartoons of all time? I No. It was during that entire push in the 90s to get educational television to be a thing. Okay. And it was on the block of WB Animation with Animaniacs and that kind of stuff. Okay. And they had a character named Toast, and he was the surfer guy like with a you know, generic surfer guy accent. And they had a special segment every once in a while because it was a weird variety show. And it was just toast with a person from history, and the show was called Ask Me If I Care. And <laughs> oh, toast, my goodness. And Toast was sitting there, and then Abraham Lincoln would be like, I did all these important things. And Toast would be like, I don't really care. <laughs> and then he would like pull a lever, and the, and the guests would get like ejected or, or whatever. They only made it a couple times because the show was very, very crazy in like what segments it had. They, yeah. had. they had song and dance segments and other stuff. But I love that of just like Ask Me If I Care, and this person just valiantly trying to make a case for why they were important, and Toast is like, eh, I'm not really bothered by it. I'm done. <laughs> That's my kind of humor. Yeah, it was funny. All right, so what I'm doing here is I painted on 
some of this highlight color onto his face. I'm a little bit off and then. Um, to get these you know, bright spots on there, uh, the, the teal color. And then I'm going back over and I'm kind of glazing the skin tone back over some of that. Okay. So high, this is part of the highlight color. Yeah, so just take that highlight color. The super highlight color? Like, I uh, had like three highlight layers. The, so the, like the mid one. Okay. So I'm going to have to go back down a little bit in my paint. I didn't leave yeah. any. Just an oversight. All right, I need you to look at this and tell me if I'm done or not. Looks pretty good. Well, I think it looks pretty good. That looks fine from, from here. Let's see here. What do you think, chat? It looks good to they me. look identical. Yeah, it look, looks good to me. I am Jordan. I, I'm about to take your job, man. Uh oh, no! Well, look okay. at this. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> no, my job is great. You can't have my job. My job's too cool. Nice. Okay. Um, let's see here. No, it looks good though, Tony. Looks really good. And Rikers Iron is saying that uh, he always stops one step too early. I've seen his paint jobs. He doesn't. He, I don't. I don't feel like he ever stops. <laughs> I feel like he goes way, way, way beyond every time. And it looks awesome, especially when there's like lights and crazy, crazy effects. Yeah, crystal. Yeah, the ice. The, the weird ice pterosaurs are fun. Do we have a new exciting batch of P3 painters today? Perhaps. Yeah. Nope. Perhaps. Nobody gets fun things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm painting this black. Travis got dark. For the cloak. All right. So. Oh, weird. Painting this cloak black. This is just coal black. Thinned down a little bit. Let me go back in. and I'm going to shade it with actual Thamar black here in a minute. Okay, but this gives a lot of color to the black coat. So you're doing coal black first? Yeah. Okay. So I'm about ready to do this face. Mm -hmm. I've got my color mixes. I've got, I've got two kind of options here. I've got this bright one on this side and then this slightly darker one over here. And I'm going to glaze these on the face? No. No. Paint. Just paint. paint. Them. Okay. So you might want to thicken them up a little bit. Okay. Uh, Gecko in a suit has an interesting question of, hey, what if we could have Rikers Iron and Jordan on the stream? Ooh. The only real problem there is th th that would be a, a quite a travel expense. We have talked about getting other people on the streams. We have, that yeah. are not necessarily staffers, but people who live in the far-flung reaches of the world. We have technology. Yeah. That is a thing yeah. we could explore. Mm-hmm. Jordan would have to probably have some headphones on at least. Yeah. Which I wouldn't complain about. Headphones are great. I don't know if we have that level of technology though. Yeah, we do. Might be one step above what we can pull off. That's not headphones. Terrible. I believe in Tony. <laughs> Tony's got magical powers enough to do it. But yeah, now that we have this this new streaming setup, even though we're still working on the sound bouncing around the room kind of things and that kind of stuff. We have so much more space, we can do things like this double setup. Yeah. And we can explore that with a wider variety of yeah. guests and whatnot. We have plans for the sound. It's just a little, yeah, yeah, we'll little bit of legwork and yeah. elbow grease to get yeah. that done. So a little more, little more time, but we're working on it. OK, so I've got my glow hitting the face. OK, give me two seconds so I can finish this up. There's this little spot right here that i got to get in. And should I also do it? I, I kind of did his little red cloaky thing there. I should be hitting yeah. that as well. So yeah. So the red, um, you want to think about how um, like red and teal would interact, because mm -hmm. um, it's not just going to completely reflect that color the same way it normally would. Right. Um, God, there's a I had a conversation with Eric about this, and I don't know enough about it. To, um, my God, I wish we had pulled this up. We really should have pulled this up. Um, but anyway, so the, the, the general concept is that light 
for OSL reflects off of different colors differently. So for instance, there are some colors that certain color of glows will not reflect off of at all. Okay. Um, just because the, the colors Absor don't. Okay. Yeah, it just like doesn't reflect. Um, and like different surfaces and, and textures will reflect color differently or reflect light differently. So like a textured patterned cloth will reflect it differently than metal will, right? Sure. So um, thinking about the material and the colors of the glows that you're doing. Um, so like for instance, um, well, what, are, what are the two colors? Uh, it's like you can't have, well, a good example is like if you're painting white armor or something, mm -hmm. nothing's going to reflect off of the white armor because the white armor yeah. is the brightest thing right. okay. there. So it just doesn't reflect um, or not in the way that you would expect it to because you can't do like a, a, gl a green glow effect on white because the white is inherently going to be brighter than, brighter the, than glow. the glow. Yeah. Um, so it tends to overpower it. Um, it would not become purple. Um, it doesn't, the, the colors don't mix when you, when you have glow. Um, it, it just does or does not reflect the color or reflects it at certain levels of brightness based on what the color is and how it, in, like, how the colors shift together. Okay, so then on this, I should be trying to... I would, I would, yeah. So I would paint it brighter so I, I would just do the, like, it will reflect in the, the teal color, uh -huh. um, but do it in a softer gradient than you would on the face. Okay. Because the face is going to be more reflective because of the oils in your skin yeah. than the, the textured cloth will be. Okay. So just do, like, a, a smoother, softer gradient for that. Or if the glow is really intense, and depending on what the, like, atmospheric light is going to be, you can have it completely overpowering the color on the cloak, which is kind of like what's going on here. But I'm going to tone this down a yeah, lot. Yeah, I'm going to go. I want to go is subtle. Just I want to keep the put face a point of where the color is going to be at to be the focal point for this glow. While you're working on that, Rabbit Monkey in the chat is really curious about those paints we talked about on the Gen Con stream. Oh, yeah. I regret not bringing some to the stream today to show mm -hmm. off. We it's could show them off Oz next week. Oh, oh no, no, we can't. You or could, you Oz could, could go run and get them. Are they at your desk? Yeah. I don't know. Can you, can you bear to be without me for that long? Yes. Please leave. All the way on the other side <laughs> of the building. And I have to go it's back not out. even that Are you still here? Cold. Okay, I'll go, I'll go get them. Are they, on, are they the ones with the question marks on The ones still? with the question marks on, on your desk? Don't bring ones without question marks. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mysterious. There's quite a few of them. Okay. I'll be right back. Uh, they're not in at my desk per se. They're in a box that's on top of another box. It's open. You'll see the paints in there. Oh. So it's a scavenger hunt. Wish me luck. Yeah, that won't be that hard. This is being prepared. Uh -huh. Very prepared for this show today. Yeah. It's just bringing up something that I didn't think of, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that per se. All right, so yeah, you can kind of see here where I've incorporated this glow on this portion of the the like fold, but not in this top area because this book is covering this direct light into this area. So this is going to be darker, but this part's going to be a lot brighter down here. Oh, well, you yeah, so. you did like way more heavy glow than I've done. I gotta go. Well, I, this this is all going to get adjusted as I start to paint those individual elements. Okay. Um, I'm just starting with the, the cloak because that's what I'm, I'm going to start with. I'm really struggling with this part here. All right. We're not going to try to rescue it. We will. I mean, the other thing, too, is, like, using reference is really, really important. Yeah. It, it really guides your, like, understanding of how, the, the, how to paint it, right? Because replicating something you see in, in life is easier than trying to remember what it's supposed to look like. Right. And going from there. All I need to do is find an infernalist. 
wearing a high collar, standing under a blue light. I mean, you don't, you don't even necessarily need the high collar. You just need to know what teal light reflecting on a red, a surface, red surface is going like. to look like. Which is easier to look up than you would think. I'm actually going to go back in and I'm going to paint some of these areas in, in black just so I can... So there's a lot more detail on this jacket than I remembered there being. While I'm drying this, I'm going to take a look. at Tony Clamp, Tony keeps making me think Dracula. Are you talking about the uh, the collar on here? Or is there another reason I make you think of Dracula? Oh, bright blood red cloak, sure. Uh, Riker's Iron wants to know what green you're using for the cloak. Uh, this is coal black over a light base coat, which is why it's... It's also like, this is a little overexposed, so it's it's really bright. Like, this is not nearly as bright in person. But that is coal black. That's what thin down coal black looks like. It's a really beautiful color, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to try this again. That's why coal black is my favorite color that we have here. Man, it still feels just so harsh. So the other thing you can do is you can incorporate some uh, pinks. So if there's a carnal pink over there, I might use that a little bit. A little bit into what? So mix that or, or use the carnal pink as a base coat over the red and then use the teal highlight on top of it. Oh, okay and try that. Not guaranteeing it's going to work, but that might help. Are you talking about mixing the carnal pink into the blue? No, you just have the blue be... Lay it over so, the top. So repaint it red. Okay. Then highlight up to like a really bright pink. Uh-huh. And then do your... Um, do your blue on top of that. Okay. This is this is take three. Can't ever do it just once. I mean, I suppose I can paint that collar red um, since my army is red and I need to put red on this model somewhere. I wasn't really planning on doing that. I'm, I kind of want it to be like a... You only found two of them? So, so this box was a box on a box situation. It was on the ground next to my desk. I looked on the ground next to your desk. I did not see. No, it might have been moved. I saw these two paints Here's with question marks sitting on your desk. Pop them on your, uh, here, let's flip over your palette. Ooh. What are these? Okay. Oh, I totally took them off. Never mind. One of those is the most exciting thing. It's a light purple. Yeah, it's a lavender color. It is lavender. This we have is two existing purples. Royal but Violet. But they're both pretty dark. And Ooh. it's amazing. That's a very nice color. It is a beautiful color. So this is not Signar Blue Highlight. And I will prove it to you by showing you what Signar Blue Highlight looks like right next to this color. So this is Caspian Blue and Royal Violet. Uh, let me find Signar Blue. So comparison on, on camera. Do you want to switch it back real quick, Tony? Oh, this is well. Okay, this looks way different in person than it does. Yeah, it looks on stream. substantially different. Put it on the try it on the palette cam. See if we get a yeah. different color out of that. You can just show the bottoms. See if it looks different. I mean, it's definitely different. Yeah, yeah. I, you're really not seeing the difference on camera. The that one that Jordan's mixing, that's the new. Is that the Caspian blue or is that the Signar blue? That's Caspian blue. That's yeah, Caspian blue. It's got it has a much more purple cast to it. Yeah. The the Signar blue highlight has more of a green. I'm, I'm doing the thumb thing. So give me a second. 
trying it on thumbs. Yeah, see if that helps a little bit. Uh, oh. You can kind of see it in there. Yeah, that's that's showing up the best. Yeah. So the top is the Signar, Signar Blue. So this is Signar Blue highlight. Yeah. And the camera really is killing it. Yeah. Quite a bit, but you can see how that bottom. Here, Tony, you do it on your thumb. Caspian Blue. Because your your camera is a lot less overexposed than mine is. Paint your face, Tony. <sighs> I gotta go to my kid's school later. <laughs> Fortunately, it's an art project, so this will be appropriate. Okay. Uh, right here, this is the Caspian Blue. It looks, it looks less purple on the screen than it does on your, on, in real life. And then this is Signar Blue. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see, that looks totally different. Yeah, but yeah, this one, this one's got a much more purple shift to it. Mm -hmm. But the other one, whatever you called that color, royal, royal, pur royal, purple? royal violet, or royal violet, violet royal is 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 very is purple very purple yeah. compared to that blue color. And I I like our new purple. Yeah, that's that's the royal violet. But this light purple is going to let you do a lot. Yeah, see, that's easier more to, things to. To find the difference, right? So, you got your your Caspian blue here, your Signar blue highlight here, and then your um, Royal violet here. Caspian blue is really similar to um, like an a true ultramarine pigment. Yeah. Like, and if you Google ultramarine pigment, mm -hmm. you'll see a like, you'll know exactly yeah. what that color looks yeah. like. Okay, so I'm supposed to go all the way up from pink because oh, all the rose. way up to That's pink. Really Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm working with a short area here, so I guess I don't need too many steps in between. I can just kind of get right to it. I'm really hurrying through this. What are we doing for time? Oh, geez. Got like 10 minutes left. Oh, we got, we got plenty of time. Okay, I can dry this. We can do some P3 painters in a minute. That amethyst is one of my new favorite reds that we've amethyst rose more yeah. recently released. Yeah, yeah, I really like that color. It's uh, it's really good when you're like doing highlights for murderous magenta, like what I'm doing right here. Yeah, because um, I really want this to look red and not purple. So I'm gonna take this. And we're gonna kind of sort of make our own. Royal or Amethyst Rose. And I might just get rid of this. I'm not sure how I like this red. Okay. It's a really, like, red is a really loud color. It is. It's a very, very loud color. I like how you describe that as a loud. It's, I like that description. It's true. It's pretty standard. Like, you know, Hawaiian shirts are loud. <laughs> okay, so take a look at what I got. Okay, one second, sorry. I think you definitely need more gradient. More, okay, so it needs to be nicely blended in there then. Yeah, Look oh yeah. The, okay. I think that, that was the part I was kind of missing. Yeah, and how many paints did you show on this uh, I showed six. Six, I believe. Yeah, but we, six. But we talked about. Oh, I do actually have another one of the colors A much here. larger number. I've, I, yeah, we have 24 new paints coming next year. Yeah. Um, I mentioned hot pink. Yeah, which I'm the most excited about because we've never had a true super pink color in the range. Yeah. Okay, how about that? Uh, looks a little bit better. Let me. I'm going to show you a little bit what I'm talking about here, Kenny. Okay. Uh, I need my Menoth White highlight because I don't have Colonel Pink here, so I'm just going to make it. Colonel Pink. I got it. Got yeah. It. Yeah. Carnal pink was our existing pink, and it's very, very white. And you don't want to use just straight carnal pink, Tony. You want to mix it into that red. Yeah, I was. Okay. So, if you see that spot here, so I'm bringing it up 
to this pink. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to mix a slightly darker color, a little bit like almost glaze. I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. I lost my brush. Somebody's throwing things on the floor. Hit the deck. And then I'm going to mix. <laughs> I wish you could all see Oz right now. <laughs> Trying to get that brush back. Hey, it's magic. It's like parkour. <laughs> oh, a little bit off. I thought I could get it one angle, and I couldn't quite reach it, so I had to, all right. had to parkour it. So see, see where I'm at now, Tony? Yeah. Okay. And then... And then you add the blue over top of that. Yeah. So take a little bit of that blue. And we're going to make that. We're going to go. And see, even that's too stark. I need to blend it out a little bit better. <coughs> so go to that darker blue. Here, go back a little bit. We're gonna paint over it. Forum Goon is curious if That's either better. of you finished your weird windows from last week too. Uh, I I mean, have, mine's mostly done. I have, not. I have not. It is uh, at it is at home. So if you can see that, like that's that's pretty good. This is one of those colors I think that the teal glow isn't really going to read very well on. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's better. That's better than I was getting before. Like at least right now, it's reading that it's catching something. Yeah. From that glow. I'd like to go in here and do some shading and stuff too. This is just flat scorn red the way it is right now. But I'll put a little, I'm going to add just another little layer to this. And then we should do some P3 painters. Yeah, I don't really like this red look. Well, now I'm not liking it because it was such a pain, but maybe it'll look great in the end. That's the problem making some of the color choices. It's like you go, this is going to look good, and then you start running into actual painting problems with how it conflicts or makes other things difficult, make you regret your choices. No regrets, Tony. Yeah, Tony, well, go, go with the instinct, right? Some of the like, one of my painting you know, rules. What's the worst that could happen? It's just a miniature. If I get a model done and I don't 100% like it, it's still done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure teal and red are one of those colors where um, light, it, like reflective light doesn't really interact yeah. very well with red. Um, or specifically teal glow on red doesn't, doesn't work very well. Yellow glow on red is fine. Um, but like, and I, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research into it to be able to like say with certainty exactly why. Mm -hmm. I know that it, it exists. I can't articulate it well enough without doing a little bit of research. Sure. So I'm going to do a little bit of research, and I'll come back to you guys next week, and we'll talk a little bit about it. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting along there. Do we want to do P3 painters real quick? Yeah, let's do some P3 painters. Actually, at first, Gecko in a Suit says, does Privateer Press have an office pet mascot? Uh, yeah, we do. Do you want to grab Hamilton? No, I've already grabbed enough stuff today. Sorry. <laughs> well, all right then, Oz. I can only go on so many. Sorry, wild, Oz doesn't want to get Hamilton to show you. Goose so it looks like we don't have a mascot. And that's not the Sorry, office guys. mascot. That's the studio. That's mascot. well, that's true. That is a, Hamilton is a studio mascot. Hamilton yeah. and his friends. Hamilton and friends are the studio mascots. We don't have an office mascot. No. I mean, you could kind of say Danny is, but mm, he's probably the closest thing. Yeah. yeah. I I reject that. But there's not like uh, a goldfish or a parakeet or you know a cat who lives here. But Danny Danny's pretty close. Yeah. 
Okay, P3 Painters. If you've not seen this before, hashtag P3 Painters. If you use this hashtag when posting photos of your miniatures, uh, we look at them on social media. And every week we usually try and pull two or three um, that kind of stand out to us, and we talk about them a little bit and show them off. So here we go. Jordan, are you ready? I am ready. Let's do it. Here's our first one. hey -o. Halo 3. This is, not, this is not a model I see very often. Correct. Actually. Because so it's not even the, the main Haley 3. Yeah, it's, it's future it's Haley. It's future Haley. So, Danny is not a ship <laughs> <laughs> He's No, oh, he's not. Striker. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. That's funny. That's hilarious. Danny is not Osh I'm going to tell him that next time I see him today. That's obvious, uh, though. But, yeah, this looks dope. Yeah. I like this, uh, it's like textured, like patterned inside of the cloak that's vaguely glowing a little bit. Yeah, I just shimmering. I'm, I'm trying to think like in, in my mind, like, you know, not even the dexterity involved, but just the, the pattern of how you manipulate the brush in that space mm -hmm. to get that pattern. So very well done. I'd like just, just another paint. Uh, let us know how you did it. Like if it, if it's all just freehanded, or if you had some other other techniques, I'm gonna flip through a bunch of these photos. Yeah, cool design, cool model, and I like the cloak. I like the uh, so you got a little OSL going on from the um, electric coils on the back of her cape here, and it like there's some green, yeah, like green color good. even down low. So nice, very well interesting. Well done. All right, and our next one here we got. Couple Morrowind Archons. These are pretty. It's a very, very bright photo, so it might be hard to see some of the details if we're missing it. But you can see like nice, clean highlighting on the bottom of the cape there. Uh, I don't know if we're missing in some more subtleties and detail and things like the wings in the cape. But right I like this model a lot. Yeah, I really right. had fun painting the studio one. This is what really stood out to me are these shields right here. Yeah, the shield, the shield is great. It's got really good definition on the mm -hmm. metallic colors there. Mm -hmm. This is good. This is Aosol. Very nice. Yeah, these are these are cool, very uh, epic models. Mm -hmm. I like that like blue metallic on the on the cape. It was really nice. All right, I can see you can see a little bit of shading in there on the wings. Yeah, this is nice, nice and subtle, mm -hmm. very muted. And for our last one, this is amazing. This is this is from Sad Sonic, a well of Orberos. Sad Sonic really did a good job of capturing the way that uh, the well, like that well, kind of pooled effect yeah. on mm -hmm. the on the top looks really good. The water looks really nice, very well painted, and it's pretty. and. This custom base is sick. Yeah, I love how uh, how they included uh, progress photos for the base, especially yeah. after the paint job. Even like yeah. you see it first, and then and then you see uh, all the work to do. This is awesome. I don't know what those pillars are made out of. Yeah, it looks really good once it's all painted too. Look at that. Very nice. Very impressive, everyone. Those are cool. Thank, thank you, you a bunch, everybody, for yeah, submitting for those. Sending those. Really, really cool. I feel like I didn't paint much today. <laughs> this is unfortunate. Okay, so since we only have a few minutes, mm -hmm. um, here's where we're at. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Well, you got to finish painting cloak. Uh, got to paint the book and his like bindings on his wrist. Mm-hmm. Uh, all this like fancy, like shiny gold front bit, mm -hmm. um, all the like straps and stuff, and his beard, uh, paint his eyes, paint his eyebrows. What do we, do we have to do anything else with the uh, with the OSL? Uh, I mean, that's you're going to do all of that incorporated the OSL as you're doing it, right? Well, I mean, on his on his face right now, like the part oh. that. Yeah, I mean, for, for mine, I think I should spread the OSL a little bit more. I feel like this is not, um, like, intense enough. Okay. I feel like it really should cover most of his face. Because, like, 
this thing is really like up in his grill. Yeah. And and the closer two things are, right? Like the closer the source of the light is to what it's reflecting on, it's going to be brighter and there's going to be a more intense light on it. Yeah. So like really his whole face should probably just be like blue with a little bit of like teal or with a little bit of a skin tone flesh showing. coming through. Yeah. Yeah, and his knife is called a black iron blade, so it's all supposed to be dark and creepy. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. My model, my way. Yeah, you do it however you want, but if you wanted to paint it all super, super creepy. He says black iron blade. Yeah, it's called a black iron blade. I that's like cool. that, though. The I like that name. The alliteration yeah, cool. of black iron blade. So. I think his face should definitely be... More like this. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna hit his hand up here just a little bit. Yeah, Osol's a really tricky thing to get right. It, it requires a lot of like pushing and pulling of the colors so that they look right. Mm -hmm. And this camera is really not doing a good job of representing anything that I'm doing here because all oh, this looks so bright. It's so bright. I did that on purpose. I made my camera look <laughs> normal. <laughs> better than yours, <laughs> so that people would look at me like, "Oh, Tony's getting so much better." What's the deal with Jordan's painting? Uh, Jordan's painting sucks. Uh, let's see here. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to stop it there. But that, I mean, yeah, good, awesome progress in an hour and four and a half minutes. <laughs> four and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, just the Tony's sabotaging me. The little paint job I did before he that. He will not sabotage me next week. <laughs> I have all the power. How I dare can, he. I can make it happen. No, you can't. Yes. <laughs> you cannot and you will not because you cannot. All right, Jordan. Take us out of here. All right, everybody. Thank you for showing up today. It's been a blast. Look forward to seeing you guys for our special show next week. Uh, thank you, Oz, for joining us yeah. today. Thanks, Oz. And Tony, thanks for being my guinea pig. Always. Wonderful. All righty, guys. See you all next week. Don't forget to check out the Hobby Hangout tomorrow with Danny. And it's a building, not buildings, walls. 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 Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye. Bye bye.